Good morning, friends, and happy Valentine's Day. I want to welcome you to this experience of worship and, and what we're calling Love Your Neighbor Day. We're so glad that you've joined us for the celebration of Mr. Rogers and his neighborhood, thinking about our neighborhood and how to bring love and kindness to all that we meet. So I invite you to grab a cup of coffee or hot tea, put aside everything that's distracting and busy so that you can be fully present as we worship God this morning. We're so weary of division and hatred playing any role in our lives. And we're celebrating this morning instead the humble joy and the gentle spirit of Mr. Rogers. How might we incorporate his quiet joy and peaceful teachings into our own lives? Can we be daring enough to believe that a good neighborhood is one where cooperation and respect and love play a significant role in all that we do together? So let's sing and laugh, pray and feel the immensity of our lives as we enter Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and our own. Join us, if you will, in our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in the neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, the first four verses. Hear these words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. 
If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Hello there, Baldwin friends. It sure is nice to see you. This month, we're talking about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, a wonderful show that I used to watch when I was your age. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is all about loving our neighbors as ourselves. But as someone once asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Over the last few weeks, we saw that our neighborhood includes people who are different races than us, people who are in jail or prisons, people with disabilities, and people who just need a little bit of a helping hand. This week, it's Valentine's Day, so of course, I want to talk about love. Now, love is a huge deal in the Bible. In fact, the Bible even says that God is love. Now imagine that. God isn't just loving. God is love. Jesus talked about love all the time, too. He was always saying that we should love our neighbor. Just as I have loved you, he says, you also are to love one another. Now, there are all different kinds of love in the world. There is the love that you might have for family, like parents or siblings or grandparents or cousins or aunts or uncles. There is the love that you might have for your pet, your dog, or cat, or fish, or, or snake, or reptile. There is love that you might have for friends, who you love spending time with, playing games and sports, or going to the playground with. And there's romantic love that people might have when they're married, or dating, or something like that. But sometimes, people don't like the way that other people love. They think that they love the wrong kinds of people, and that can be really sad. So I thought we could call a friend who could help us understand this love. So let's give our friend, Reverend Anais, a call. Hi. Like many people, I grew up with a mom and a dad. My mom is a girl and my dad is a boy, and they love each other very much. But as I've gotten older, a lot of my friends and neighbors have different kinds of relationships. Are there other ways of being in love? Yes, there are absolutely different ways uh, for love to be expressed. This has me thinking about how sometimes you might see someone or you might yourself have two moms or you might see someone or you might yourself have two dads. And so whether you have a mom and a dad or two dads or two moms, those are all wonderful ways uh, to experience love. But I know sometimes people don't like when people love like that. They say that everyone has to love exactly the same. What should we say to those people? I think it is important for us to know that the way uh, that we approach love toward a person of either the same gender or a different gender is because of who we are on the inside. And so we always want to celebrate who a person is on the inside. And so if they have two moms or two dads, or you feel special feelings towards someone who is the same gender as you are or a different gender than you are, uh, that is okay and that is good. And so we always want to celebrate that. What are some ways that we could be a good neighbor to everyone, no matter who they love? I think it is really important that first and foremost, we are good friends to everyone we meet. And so if we have a friend who has two moms or two dads, or we ourselves feel special feelings uh, toward a person who is the same gender as we are, it is important that we always love them. 
uh, and we are kind to them for who they are. It's also important to speak up if we see somebody uh, being mistreated. And so if someone is mean to a person because of who they have as parents or who they are as a person, we should always tell a grown up. Thank you so much for joining us, Reverend Anais. What a wonderful neighbor. Thank you for having me. It's always important for us to be good neighbors to one another. And so when we ask the question, who is my neighbor? Now we can remember that people are our neighbors no matter who they love. And by including and welcoming people who love differently than us, we can help make the world into the beloved neighborhood where everyone is our neighbor. Let's close with a repeat after me prayer. So I'll start and then you can join in after me. Here we go. Dear God, you love everyone. no matter who they love. Help us to love like you. And build your beloved kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen.
of friendliness. Yes, we are friendly people. He is replaced with uncomfortableness. And without ever knowing it, we emit off statements, verbal and nonverbal, that you don't belong here. All week long, I've been thinking about the story of Abraham and Sarah. How they journeyed with God. It was a messy story to read in the Old Testament. If you've ever spent time with it, you hear God giving promises and Abraham and Sarah disobeying. There's nothing nice in me about this story. And one day, Abraham and Sarah put down roots for a few moments. They made It just hit me. I forgot a whole bunch of stuff. How about that? Let me back up here. Our next scripture passage is this. For just as the body has many members, and all the members are one body, though many, they are one body, and so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we are all made to drink of the one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot should say, 
because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am a knot and I, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as God chose. And if all, if all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that think less honor, we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members we treat with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Amen. We share one more time this affirmation of faith that focuses in on the work of Mr. Rogers and the kind of world that we are attempting to create with one another. Will you join with me in saying one more time, we believe in kindness. We believe that small actions can have a large impact and that kindness is contagious. We believe in being neighborly. We believe that gratitude restores the soul and taking time to say thank you is always worth the effort. We believe that we are missionaries in our own neighborhoods and that being salt and light in the world means loving and living like Christ. We believe in the life-changing power of friendship. And we believe that beautiful days are made not by what, with what we have, but by who we love. And we believe in cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We thank God for this beautiful day. Amen. Grace and peace to you all this morning as we celebrate Valentine's Day and our own version of Valentine's Day here at Baldwin Community, passing out cookies and extending our kindness to our neighborhood. We want to be good neighbors. We want to be welcoming neighbors here in this place. I have to admit that this last month or so has been a true blessing to me to be able to spend time reading on and immersing myself in the life of Fred Rogers. Along the way, I discovered in the book, Mr. Rogers and Philosophy, a thought that I'd never considered before on how Mr. Rogers was a great Christian mystic. A mystic who was ever willing to engage the spiritual practice of wonder and play and the ability to be awed in the presence of God. And to offer an awe-filled acceptance 
to everyone who was around him. That loving kindness was merging with his daily Christian practice to create a community that was not make-believe, but was very real and true and included all sorts of people into his life and ministry. He was a mystic that invited children and parents and the whole world to eventually come to the place where they could entertain the idea that they too could be Christian mystics. People devoted to the awe and wonder of God. I discovered that Fred Rogers treated his Bible with great care. It was not for him an instruction manual or a rule book or a warranty that told you that in five easy steps, if you followed these rules, something extraordinary would happen and you would get entry into the kingdom of God. But instead, he loved his Bible and read it as a manifesto to love, creating a, a, a document for himself that illuminated every relationship, every decision that he made. Wondering for himself, how is it that a faithful person can incorporate these sacred truths into who we are becoming in Christ? And then how will we live what we read to the glory of God? My hope that even though this is our last Sunday considering Mr. Rogers, that this series is not coming to an end. That we are not putting away this substantial conversation on what it means to be a good or beloved neighbor here in Whitehall. That instead we keep this conversation alive and going with one another, keeping the words that we are speaking about what it means to be a neighbor vital and missional driving Baldwin Community United Methodist Church's mission forward to embrace the wideness and the beauty and the wonder of the neighborhood that we have been placed into to be Christ's church. I read a document not too long ago that announced to the reader, the place where your church, the address of your church, is not an accident. The address of your church incorporates God's mission and purpose for that building and that people. Your address is not an accident. In my childhood, I used to love reading 1 Corinthians 12. Paul's image of the body made perfect sense to me. It's incomprehensible to many of us that we would despise or exile any part of our physical person, our physical address that we live in daily. We need the body that has been gifted to us by God every part in order for us to live whole and healthy lives. But what I missed in the nurturing, the good and kind and gracious nurturing of my home church and youth was that there's an extraordinarily horrible reality in Christ's body. That there are and have been people who are alienated, abused, excommunicated, and ostracized from the church community all the time. And they are told with great ease that they do not belong, that there is no place for you here. You are not one of us. My initial loving and folding is not the same experience as all of my neighbors when it comes to being in relationship to the church. The whole commentary on the Bible reminds the reader when reading about 1 Corinthians 12, that unity, not unvarying uniformity, but unity 
is the law of God in a world of grace. As members of the body composed of an organic whole, none can be dispensed as needless. None can be dispensed as needless. We together, all of us, compose an organic whole. So that means the healthy church, the whole church, will not be comprised of people, members who agree on everything, every matter, but will be a body of Christ capable of holding within its unity differences, diversity, and opinions in an ongoing conversation where Christ presides over all that we say and all that we do so that people are included into the disciples' circle and given voice and value and presence. Wesley Wright, White writes, to say that four times quickly, Wesley White writes, I am that which I am joined to, and I have both communal and individual identities. And like it or not, being part of the body of Christ means that I am in connection with some very questionable characters including Jesus, including Jesus. What does it mean to be the subversive, questionable, faithful body of Christ, unified in creating the beloved neighborhood and beloved space in our communion with one another? First, it is by declaring to all, you belong here. We gather as Baldwin Community United Methodist Church under the mark that has sealed us in baptism, giving to us all our belonging from Christ, God's free gift, working and marking us as a peculiar body of people in this world. And we need each other. We cannot exist without the diversity and the beauty and the wonder of being in community with people who are different from us. And because of Jesus, we have and hold this belonging together. No matter what race, no, no matter what sex, or age, or orientation, or creed, or ability, or knowing in Christ, we gather because we long to belong in Christ's body. Two, belonging adds significance and meaning and purpose to each and every life. That in the safe space that we work so hard to create as Christ's body, we are able to test our gifts and graces with one another. Am I living into my gifts and graces? We are able to talk about our calling and our leadership. Is my call right? Am I living into the call that Christ has set before me? Am I being a leader in the way that Christ longs for me at this church to lead and to use my giftedness? But do know that along the way we will fail and we will succeed. We will disappoint each other and we'll surprise each other. We'll betray one another and then we'll come home. For prodigal servants can't seem to get away from those places where we want to belong, where we need to belong in Christ. And finally, the beloved, being the beloved neighbor requires that each and every disciple submit themselves, their whole being, mind, body, soul, strength, to the law of love. That we be convicted by, bound by, thrive in the presence of God's 
holy and most excellent love. It is, after all, as Paul says, the most excellent way. And I believe with all my heart and all my soul, my mind and all my strength, this is why Fred Rogers ended every show with, I like you just the way you are. Because he believed it. He meant it. So may that be our gift this day as Christ's own, that we look to the world and we say to them first, I like you just the way you are. Amen. Hear these words as they lead us to pray our confession in Christ. Lord, we live in a most unneighborly world where your beloved people experience daily feelings of exclusion and rejection. We confess that we all want to be seen through the lens of love and immense value, and that we would be great people of great worth. Yet at the same time, we, your church, act selfishly by building walls that block love from those who are hurt or lonely. We pick and choose who we will lift up as valuable. Who hears the quiet words of encouragement and who receives life affirmation in the most Christ-like ways? We confess our sinful desire to play God in the lives of all around us. We are sorry. Help us to grow in our Christian witness by increasing our love for all. Teach us to love without judgment or condition, in other words, radically. Help us to grow in being members of Christ's love. Most holy God, hear our silent prayers of confession of the ways in the the last week where we failed to be loving and kind, let us pray. Mr. Rogers quoted Dr. William F. Orr frequently whenever he was talking about forgiveness. He would say, one of my wise teachers once told me, there is only one thing that evil cannot stand and that is forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ this day, be forgiven. Jesus, may your good love and kindness wash over us, helping us to see ourselves with grace and clarity. For if we see ourselves with such kindness, how easy it will be to share this grace with others. We seek to make our neighborhood loving and grace-filled. Show us how to be obedient in our love. In your loving name we pray. Amen. And we continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We thank God for the life and witness of Fred Rogers. His lasting impact invites contemporary Christians to live in the tension between legalism and love. So prevalent in church and society now. Love cannot thrive under the oppressive weight of rules and limitations. 
Love seeks a freedom to bless and grace every human being we come in contact with. Love teaches us how to accept each other and perhaps learn to love ourselves too. So let us now sing this song of acceptance. make us one. It's been great worshiping with you today. We have a few uh, or a lot of announcements as we close our worship time down this morning. Just a reminder, Love Our Neighbor Day is going to be starting at noon out in the circle. Um, you'll get co coffee and cookies, pick up your Lent at home bag, and be able to see each other as we mingle in the, the grace of God's love. Hope to see you there. Um, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and we're going to be doing Ashes to Go out in the front circle again, noon to one. And you can pick up your Lent at home bags. And also on that day, we'll be marking your, your uh, invitation to the observance of Lenten discipline with the sign of the cross. We won't be imposing ashes on each other this year. Our Lent at Home Begs, this is one of them. Um, I'll be going live on Facebook tomorrow at noon, and we'll pull all of the elements of this bag out, and I'll be telling you how to incorporate each component piece into your Lenten journey this year. One of the pieces that you'll want to pay special attention to is... This book, this is our, our devotional for the season of Lent. We'll be using it for our Monday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. check-in devotional time, 15 minutes. It'll start this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, at 7 p.m. 
And then in your bag, you'll notice there's an announcement. Roger Owens is going to be with us next Sunday at 4 o'clock on Zoom. He's going to be talking about why we need spiritual practices. We talk about practices all the time, but what do they do for us? How do they take us deeper into a relationship with God in Christ? So if you'd like to hear more from Roger, we would love for you to sign up on the bit.ly link that you see on the screen. And we would welcome your questions, your thoughts, your eagerness to start this Lenten journey. Our altar flowers this morning are in honor of Helen and Frank Pamilio's anniversary. And from a, a cold Pennsylvania, Helen and Frank, we wish you in Florida um, the best wishes on your anniversary. Um, may hope and love re reign supremely in your hearts for one another. And now let us be challenged one more time by Mr. Rogers. Often when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. I felt that many times. My hope for all of us is that the miles that we go before we sleep will be filled with all the feelings that come from deep care, delight, sadness, joy, wisdom, and that in all of the endings of our life, we will be able to see new beginnings, grace and peace. Amen. Amen.